Here we're going to look at a nice problem from the 2006 Australian National Math Olympiad. So we want to define the following sequence of natural numbers. So it's going to be given by a sub n, and it will be the product of the digits of n. So I think this is pretty interesting. There are a bunch of problems on YouTube, including some that I've done, where we look at the sum of digits function. And so this is like a version of that, but the product of the digits instead. So we have two goals. Our first is to show that n is bigger than or equal to a sub n. And our second is to find the values of n that satisfy this equation. So we've got a sub n equals n squared minus 17n plus 56. Okay, so let's jump into it. So we'll do this first goal first. So let's maybe expand n in its base 10 representation. So that means we can write n as x sub k times 10 to the k plus x sub k minus 1 times 10 to the k minus 1 all the way down x sub 1 times 10 and then finally x sub 0. And then we might as well take x sub k, that highest order term, just to be from the set 1 to 9, whereas x sub j for all other values, you know, except for that top turn, term can also be 0. So we've got 0 through 9 for those. Next up, I want to start doing an inequality here. And I will notice that I can put a greater than or equal to if I just leave off all of these terms after x sub k minus 1. So let's do that. So n is equal to this expanded in base 10, but that makes it bigger than or equal to x sub k times 10 to the k. But now we see that 10 is bigger than 9, so this is bigger than or equal to x to the k times 9 to the k. Next up, we'll notice that each of these xj's between x sub 0 and x sub k minus 1 are between 0 and 9. That means they're less than or equal to 9. So let's maybe write that down real quick. So we're going to use the fact that x sub 0, x sub 1, all the way up to x sub k minus 1 is less than or equal to 9. That means we can extend out our inequality to say that this is bigger than or equal to x sub k times x sub k minus 1 times x sub k minus 2 all the way down x sub 1 times x naught like that. Again, using this blue fact here. But notice that that's exactly the definition of our sequence. This is equal to a sub n. So now looking at the extreme left and right hand side of this inequality, we see that we have achieved this first goal. Okay, let's clean this up and then we'll look at our second goal. So our second and final goal is to find the values of n that make our sequence equal to this quadratic expression in n. So that's given by n squared minus 17n plus 56. And while looking at this, you want to remember that we've done a part A first, so maybe we could use this first part in order to determine the values of the second part that satisfy this equation. And what we want to use is the fact that a sub n is less than or equal to n for all values of n to go ahead and put an n over here. Then next, instead of solving like our goal equation, which might be quite difficult because it's hard to get a handle on this function a n, maybe we can solve this thing that is like hugging our goal equation. So in other words, let's solve this equation given by n equals that quadratic expression instead. And then maybe we can use that to reason what the solutions to a sub n are. Okay, so just to reiterate, what we'll solve instead is n equals n squared minus 17n plus 56. Now this is actually uh, pretty straightforward. We can just maybe move everything over and then do some factoring. So notice that this is equivalent to saying that n squared minus 18n plus 56 is equal to zero. Next up, you can check that four times 14 is 56, but then four plus 14 is 18, so we're good to go on that kind of factorization. We have n minus four, and then n minus 14 equals zero. So that tells us that this like supplementary equation 
is satisfied when n is equal to four or n is equal to 14. So next up, we'll notice that this is the equation of an upward facing parabola. So let's get a picture of that parabola. So it goes like that. We've got maybe four right here and 14 right here. Like I said, it's an upward facing parabola. So its picture is something like this. So notice values of n that are bigger than or equal to this quadratic expression correspond to values of n that are below the x-axis in the graph of this parabola. So in other words, we're only looking for the values of n between here and here. Those are the only ones that possibly satisfy this inequality, but that means those are the only ones that will possibly satisfy this equality. So, in other words, what we need to check here is the values of n between 4 and 14. So there's probably a bunch of ways to argue this carefully, but maybe I'll do it with a chart, and I will form that chart by using symmetry to simplify the calculation. So let's say we'll have a three-row chart like this. One row will be the n values, and then we'll have the a sub n values, and then finally we'll have the n squared minus 17n plus 56 values. What we want is for this second row and this third row to be equal. Now I'm gonna take n from four to 14. Those are the only values that I need to look at by my previous argument. So let's add those in here. Okay, so I've got my values of n added in there. Next up, I wanna notice that this thing has some symmetry. Notice the vertex of this quadratic expression will occur at 17 divided by two. That's just from the standard formula of negative b over two a, if you will. 17 over two is eight and a half. So that means we'll have symmetry in the values of the quadratic polynomial about this point right here which tells us that we only need to calculate the values of the quadratic polynomial from four to eight, and then we can apply that symmetry. Okay, well, so let's do that. So if we plug four into this quadratic polynomial right here, we'll get four. Again, I'll let you guys check some of these. This is not so hard to calculate. Then if we plug in five, we'll get negative four. If we plug in six, we'll get negative 10. Here we'll get negative 14. Here we'll get negative 16. So again, that's from plugging in all those values into the quadratic polynomial. And then by this symmetry, we know that here we'll get negative 16, negative 14, negative 10, negative 4, 4, and then finally 14. Again, I extended the value of 14 over. Obviously, that is kind of further to the left here. Okay, next up, we'll look at the value of a sub n, which is maybe arguably easier to calculate. We just multiply the digits of n. So notice here we'll get four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two, three, four. So putting this all together, we see that a sub n equals this quadratic polynomial only at this spot right here. So that tells us that n equals four is our only solution. And that's a good place to stop.